Beth Blackerby from violinlab.com. And this tutorial um, is for my YouTube subscribers, and I thank all of you for subscribing. Um, and I, in searching for uh, subject matter for tutorials, I decided to, to concentrate on things that are very near and dear to my heart, things that when I'm teaching my own private students, I give a lot of importance to, I highlight, I emphasize, I spend a lot of time um, helping the student evolve these kinds of techniques. And, and these techniques I'm talking about are techniques that go into making our tone and, and our sound very beautiful, sophisticated. The difference between sounding like a student and sounding like a seasoned player, a professional. And, and these things that, that don't necessarily have to do with hours and hours and hours of training. Some things do, obviously. Um, the, the difference between a professional player and a beginning player has to do with thousands of hours of practice. Um, but, but there are things we can do with relatively minimal effort for exponential gain, okay? And those things have to do with just sounding your best. So that's what this um, video is on, and, uh, <clears throat> and any subsequent videos, keep, keep um, checking back. So the first thing I really wanna talk about is the use of the bow. So one of the things I notice with students is that they use a minimal amount of bow to accomplish whatever it is that they're playing, and that there's so much more bow to be used that can be used. And this is just one of those things that it sounds simple, and it sounds almost um, unimportant, but really, honestly, that is one of the biggest differences. If you watch soloists on YouTube playing, just, just check out any of the number of videos where, where a famous player is playing, look at how much bow they use. You, you frequently, you almost always see tip to frog playing, just constantly back and forth like this. And when you watch a student play, you see students that really just are staying right in the middle of the bow or are really stuck in just a certain part of the bow, not able to get out of that. So I wanna talk about that. I wanna give you some exercises, <clears throat> things that you can do that will, in a, in a small amount of time, really exponentially increase the beauty of your sound and tone production. So um, the first thing I want you to, to do, okay, is I want you to put your hand in the middle of the bow, okay? This is an exercise just to be able to, to start to use more of the bow toward the frog. Now, what I notice with students is they're very hesitant to play at the frog, okay? So I want you to really start to love this area of the bow, okay? Because this is where we get a lot of color and we can and, and do make a lot of nuance in our sound here at the frog. And this is where it's the least comfortable to play because we have to make adjustments with the hand and the fingers. So what I want you to do, just the first thing is I want you to make a bow hold sort of in the middle of the bow and I want you to actually bow <clears throat> to the frog, which means your hand is gonna be going further than it would ever need to go. So you're gonna use muscles that you didn't quite feel before. And the biggest muscle you're gonna use is this muscle right here. Okay, so you're just gonna make bow strokes all the way to the frog. And you can play a little scale if you'd like. And you should feel this muscle squeezing right here. Now be careful that you don't lift your shoulder to your ear, so you don't go like this when you, when you play. You're not lifting your shoulder. You're keeping your shoulder down and you're just pulling in toward your body with, with this muscle here. So if you do this for any length of time, if you do, just do it for a minute, you're gonna see the difference. You're gonna feel the difference immediately when you go back to playing regularly. So you just play that like this for a little while. And then move your hand back down and just feel the difference. It's all of a sudden it becomes much easier to play at the frog. And those whole bow strokes, all of a sudden it's just, it, it, it's, it's a breeze, okay? So that's just a, a little thing you can do to warm up. <clears throat> now another thing is when you're playing whatever song you're working on, so 
whether you're a beginner, intermediate player, an advanced player, it doesn't matter. Whatever piece you're working on, and I'm just going to pull this little piece out because it's very accessible for you to listen to. If you just put in the YouTube search engine, sad romance, okay, you're going to find this, this tune. And I think it's, you, you can even put in sad violin and you'll still find it. I do have the sheet music on my website. You can also email me at violinlab at gmail.com and I can send you a PDF of this song. This is, it's really pretty, but you'll recognize it perhaps. Um, <laughs> So this is one where we, the slow playing where we use full bow strokes. And again, what happens is the students tend to get very comfortable just staying in a certain part of the bow, not using the whole bow. And I guess my, my point is, and what I want to emphasize now, what you really to understand is that the difference between an inch or two of bow can make a world of difference in the sound. It's that striking. So if I play this and I sound like um, some of a few of my students, um, I would just okay now I'm going to use 10 percent more and to me the the, the gain in sound is more than 10 percent. percent more than that okay okay 10 percent more And practicing, ask yourself this question every single time. <clears throat> Can I use 10% more bow? Can I give 10% more? And then when you do that, when you add 10% more to the bow, whatever, again, I mean, you could be playing something even um, simply, you could be in the first Suzuki book. Can I give 10% more? Give ten percent more. And at some point, it becomes too much. At some point, the circumstances of the of the of the piece, whether the tempo is too fast or the note values are too quick, you can't use any more bow. So you want to find the threshold where you can manage the bow stroke. Use as much bow as you can and manage it. Manage um, um, the bow changes, not lose contact. Uh, with with the bow and the strings and and find that threshold and work around that threshold because I guarantee you you haven't reached that threshold you can you can use 10 percent more bow you can use 10 percent more bow after that and there are times when you know I'm a little complacent and I'm <clears throat> playing a gig I'm playing a wedding or something like that um, and I ask myself, you know I'm, I'm hearing my sound and I'm thinking it's a little blase what can I do the first thing I do, the very first thing, is I use a little bit more bow and that usually fixes everything. All of a sudden everything has a sparkle and has a beauty to it. So, so that is, that's my heartfelt message to you is, is really, really listen, search within yourself, see if you can use more bow and accomplish ex for, for e everything that you're playing. And, and, and really work on some of these exercises. Like I said, put your hand in the middle, do this. Really get comfortable moving all the way to the frog. Really get comfortable moving all the way to the tip. 
you know, if you spend one minute down here and one minute just down there at the extremes, at the very extremes of the bow practicing, you will hear a difference. You will be able to manage everything much easier in, in a just very short amount of time. And you will sound like you've been playing at least a year longer than you already have been.